Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this press conference following our informal council. Uh, we had uh, two very interesting and inspiring days. Uh, in Eindhoven, we started, and this morning we got to Amsterdam, where we are now. Uh, and the informal took place within the central theme of our meeting, and it was food of the future, the future of food. And it was, of course, about uh, one of uh, the major challenges that lie ahead. Uh, how are we going to produce, produce enough high quality and healthy food uh, to feed a growing world population uh, and do so in a sustainable way, um, facing environmental challenges, for example, like climate change. Uh, yesterday we had an inspiring program that was all about uh, innovation, um, because we think innovation must always play a major role uh, in when we look to the future of our food system. So we organized uh, a special exposition for the ministers in Eindhoven, which can be visited all week uh, by the public, and it's called Food to Be, uh, where we were shown uh, major innovations by big uh, Dutch companies, but also uh, new innovations by smaller, uh, innovative entrepreneurs. Uh, and also there were designers who we asked to give us a glimpse of how the future of food might look like uh, so it would tickle us to think about the future. Uh, then we visited Philips Growwise, uh, which is a part of the Philips Lighting Company, um, uh, where they have uh, so-called closed systems that they use to grow vegetables, and they gave us a glimpse of what might be urban farming in the future. And then finally we visited a very innovative dairy farm, uh, where cows could roam freely inside and outside of the stable, and the robots uh, were inside. Um, uh, to help the farmer uh, to manage his business. Uh, that gave us inspiration and food for thought for the discussions we had here today. Uh, we started in the beautiful Ecodome, uh, and we ended our discussions in the Maritime Museum, and, where, uh, and we discussed there the future of the common agricultural policy for the years uh, post-2020. Uh, the CAP provides a potentially powerful instrument to contribute to the future, and it's very important to start the discussion now already, uh, because we simply cannot afford to take agriculture for granted. Uh, we provided a discussion paper uh, as president to uh, all our colleagues, and we outlined uh, some challenges and developments that lay ahead. Uh, we started our meeting today with uh, discussion in small groups with uh, ministers only, um, and then we, uh, we ended with a plenary session. Let me share you some of the insights, uh, remarks, and ideas. Um, um, it, was a, it, it was the start of the discussion, of course, and we have some years ahead, and the discussion will take uh, a longer period. Uh, but there was common ground that we will need uh, innovation to face the challenges that lie ahead, that we, we, we need to think uh, how uh, climate change um, uh, how agriculture can contribute to uh, the issue of climate change, because it's not only a part of the problem, but it certainly is a part of the solution. Uh, how we can continue to support rural areas. Um, we questioned how to strengthen the position of farmers and also strengthen them in a better functioning food chain so they get uh, value for the, uh, the work they're doing. Uh, and we also talked about the external dimensions of the common agricultural policy. Can we? Um, um, can we use the knowledge we have here in Europe to help developing countries develop their agriculture, but also the other side around, um, uh, can we make sure that uh, we're self-sustainable when the world become, might become more unstable? We all agreed about uh, the goals of the future of the CAP just like now. Uh, it should also, after 2020, still be there to help farmers to earn a good income. It should be there to secure our food production in a sustainable way. It should be there to strengthen our economies, and it should be there uh, to keep our rural areas visit, uh, vivid. Um, in the coming weeks, we will summarize today's discussions, and of course I will discuss uh, with my colleagues from the incoming presidency, Slovakia and Malta, uh, how we can keep this very important discussion going in the coming months and even years. Um, I want to emphasize again that this was just the very start of the discussion about the future of the CAP. Uh, clearly positions differ, uh, but we had a fruitful discussion and a lot of shared insights. So that uh, proves, uh, I think we will have a good uh, debate in the upcoming months and years. Uh, of course, this was about the future. 
And as a lot of delegates also mentioned, we must not forget that today, uh, everywhere in Europe, uh, also here in the Netherlands, we've seen uh, two protests also during our uh, informal, farmers are struggling. They are struggling to produce uh, our food for the price that the market is willing to pay them. Uh, and we will talk about that uh, again during uh, our regular formal meeting uh, in the June Council that will take place in four weeks from now uh, in Luxembourg. Uh, and the market situation will be on the agenda. We will, uh, we will discuss in depth uh, whether the, uh, the measures that, have, that are in place now are helpful enough and whether we can do more uh, to help farmers uh, through those difficult periods. But as I mentioned, that will be on the agenda in four weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Hogan. <clears throat> thank you very much. And first of all, I wish to thank President Van Dam and all of the team here in the Netherlands for an uh, excellent two days in Eindhoven and in Amsterdam, uh, and to thank them for the organization of this uh, informal agricultural council. As uh, Martin has said, the future of food uh, is certainly something that is a theme that people can empathize with. Uh, but at the same time, we're conscious of the present. And the recent reform of the CAP, which effectively came into effect just over a year ago, is now undergoing a, a strong scrutiny, strong evaluation by stakeholders in terms of how it's delivering on its objectives. And we are going to get involved in that, uh, as, and the process now has started uh, with this debate today to see what we have to do in terms of risk management, looking at the tools in the marketplace to see are they adequate or not, in order to deal with the market volatility, particularly in the dairy and pigmeat sector. Uh, equally, there, we are conscious of the fact that there's been a number of very important international agreements in 2015 on sustainable development and on climate change, and how we can introduce uh, additional measures in the CAP that will actually implement those particular uh, agreements is also on people's minds. One of the very important, two most important issues that emerged today in terms of the present is the market volatility, uh, particularly in the dairy and pigmeat sector. And we will, as the President has said, be discussing that in depth at the next meeting of the Council and evaluating the measures taken to date. Equally, the food chain uh, was an issue that resonated considerably, uh, where uh, a lot of farmers are not getting the price that they would expect uh, from their hard labour. Uh, because of the disproportionate influence that other actors have in the food chain vis-a-vis -vis the producer. So we are examining ways through the Agri-Market Task Force, which will report later this year, about how we can address those issues uh, in a more adequate way. And I look forward to the recommendations of that task force, which of course is being chaired uh, by somebody from the Netherlands, Mr. Case Veerman, former Minister for Agriculture. Simplification of the CAP is a constant theme. And just to say that I will be bringing forward proposals on how we can simplify the greening aspects of the CAP uh, at the next uh, Council in June. Uh, I was very interested in hearing the words of our young farmers representative, the President of, of SEJA, uh, Mr. Diego, who certainly emphasised very importantly that if we want to keep young farmers in farming, that we need to do more in terms of assisting them uh, to take the responsibility of farming and to enter, it into, uh, enter this profession in a very meaningful way in the future. Uh, the mid-term review uh, of any or any discussions about a possible mid-term review of the CAP uh, was something that was asked, but of course I was in listening mode today, uh, hearing the views of ministers, and we haven't come to any conclusions yet on this. And it was interesting that some ministers said that there is some reform fatigue around the place with their stakeholders in relation to the fact that we've just had our CAP reform and it's being implemented at the moment and that more work needs to be done on the proper implementation of the policy that we have at the moment uh, before we start down the road of uh, wondering to know whether we should make substantial changes to the existing policy. So thank you for those opening remarks and of course I'm available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Uh, we will now take some questions. Um, please may I ask you to use the microphone and state your name and the media you work for. Um, who can I give the first question? Yes, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, my name is Rosa Donovan from Agrifax. Um, Commissioner, first of all, to yourself, uh, you just said that you were in listening mode this morning during the formal session 
on the future CAP. I'm just wondering, were there any specific ideas that struck you as innovative looking ahead to the design of the future farm policy? I'm also curious to know if um, divergent views emerged on the budget, on the budgetary issue, if that was raised during the debate. And Minister Van Dam, um, you said you wanted to stimulate a debate on the post a cap, uh, a cap post 2020. And in a paper just ahead of the informal, you suggested the idea of a common agricultural and food policy. Just wanted to know what the reaction was from uh, your, your colleagues in that regard. And looking ahead to the June Farm Council, you said that the implementation of the measures would be high on the agenda. I'm also curious to know how you sort of envisage that two-day meeting, I understand, and if the organic regulation, if we'll have a deal by then under the Dutch presidency, as, as you had foreseen initially. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, can I say that the central themes that were coming across quite forcibly, I've already outlined them, but I, just to repeat one or two of them, people do understand that we need to strengthen our risk management tools uh, and to take account of the difficult commodity crisis that's happened from time to time, and at the moment we see one in particular in the dairy sector. So using existing measures uh, that are in the Rural Development Programme, uh, are seen to be not taken up as much as, members, as, as member states would have liked. So we need to look at to see how we can strengthen those tools in order to give them more general application and more stronger application in the context of the market volatility we have at the moment. So equally, people do want to see more sustainability at the heart of our policy. There is a food security challenge of an additional 2.5 billion people that have to be fed between now and 2050, but we know we cannot do that without taking account of the implications of, our, of, of sustainable intensification of agriculture and the implementation of our climate agreement in Paris. So they are two very important issues. But of course, we, equally, knowledge and innovation and the type of very important uh, 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 innovation and innovative practices and pioneering developments that we see in Eindhoven this week uh, it certainly has given many delegations food for thought in terms of what is possible uh, and thinking outside the box uh, in terms of what products might be available in the future. Uh, so uh, everybody's horizons, I think, have been broadened by the Dutch experience, particularly in the, in, at the Steck Expo uh, in Eindhoven, for which we were very uh, much grateful for, to have on show this week. Um, the budget wasn't discussed at all because it's very early days. Uh, but the only thing that was on people's minds in terms of money was what's going to happen in the June Council or indeed beyond in terms of uh, implementing the package of measures uh, that are already being implemented as part of the Solidarity Package of September 2015. And as you know, there are eight member states that have yet to implement the targeted aid schemes and they have until the end of June to do so. So we will be evaluating the financial situation uh, of farmers in the context of the market developments debate uh, at the June Council, and we'll also be uh, seeing whether the outstanding member states in terms of allocating their targeted aid uh, have been done so. Okay, thank you. Rosa, thank you for your... All right, there we are again. Thank you for your questions. The first was about uh, common agriculture and food uh, policy. Um, uh, we had an interesting discussion uh, about that, uh, and we concluded that we need to uh, keep on discussing it, just as I mentioned about the whole, uh, the whole team, um, because we, we, we didn't want to reach conclusions, and we couldn't reach a conclusion. What we agreed upon is that there are some um, social challenges also on the food side that, needs to, that need consideration. Uh, for example, uh, we want more healthy foods, um, um, and uh, food production will change uh, in some environments. We saw it yesterday when we visited the Philips GrowWise uh, system, in which I asked my colleagues, tell me, is this a farm or is the factory which we're visiting? Uh, it was a place where vegetables were being produced. Um, so there's a lot of reason to, uh, to keep on uh, discussing it and also to discuss how those social challenges on the field of food, like health, like uh, sustainability, uh, uh, could be incorporated in the, in the CAP, and we will continue to discuss that in the, uh, the upcoming months and years, probably. Uh, I think this, this debate will go on for the next two, two and a half years. Uh, the second question was whether we have a, uh, an agreement on organic farming on the agenda in the Luxembourg, uh, during the Luxembourg Council by the end of June. Um, um, 
I would be very happy if we do so. Uh, I'm still optimistic, because as you can tell, the deadline is coming closer. Uh, but the process is, uh, um, I think it's still on schedule. Uh, but as we, as we knew from the front, uh, uh, there are some uh, difficult issues that need to be solved. Uh, but I'm still optimistic that we could reach it. Um, but we'll see uh, whether we'll, uh, we'll reach an agreement before the, uh, the June Council or, uh, or it takes a, a little bit longer. Any other questions in the back, please? <clears throat> this is a, a question for the Commissioner. My name is Sofia Spiru from Cathy Merini in Greece. And it's about the state of play of the negotiations with the SADC and of an issue that's of particular interest to Greece, which is the protection of feta cheese. There is some information that the Commission now plans to revise the agreement with the SADC with a view to improving the protection offered to feta cheese. And I would like to know if this is so. What is the rationale behind this uh, move and uh, how you see it being implemented? What time horizon and through what procedures? Does it have to be approved by the SADC or is it something that the Commission feels it could move on quite uh, confidently? Thank you. As you know, in any particular free trade agreement, there's a, a review period. And the review period for to discuss this agreement between the European Union and South Africa is five years. So what we committed to do is to start the process of revising on the protocol, under the protocols of this particular agreement, how we can improve uh, the protection of FETA. I would point out to you that there is no protection whatsoever at the moment in South Africa for FETA. And uh, this agreement for the first time recognises uh, considerable progress that has been made in the recognition of Greek FETA. Uh, and this has been acknowledged by the Minister for Agriculture. Uh, and we have had considerable success in the recognition of GIs in many of our free trade agreements in South Africa, but also in the Canadian and Vietnamese deals. So we aspire to give the maximum pr protection for all of our GIs in any of our free trade agreements, including the ones we're negotiating at the moment with the United States of America, and indeed with Japan. So what we're doing in Greece uh, uh, with the Greek uh, government is emphasizing the fact that we will revise where possible uh, in discussions in five years' time as part of the normal review uh, the uh, issue of protection of feta cheese, but also in the meantime uh, we will signal whatever we can do to promote with the Greek authorities and stakeholders feta cheese uh, in South Africa. because. Uh, if, if it wasn't recognized up to now in South Africa, now that it is on the way towards greater recognition, we have to ensure that this is understood by the, by the marketplace. And we are prepared to put uh, our support behind promotion funds, uh, and uh, part of our promotion and quality policy will be at the disposal of the Greek stakeholders in order to make sure that it's well known, the value, the heritage uh, associated with this very important product in Greece. Any other questions in the back, please, to the right? <clears throat> Jan Braakman, Boerderij Farmers Weekly in the Netherlands. Um, my question is a little bit off topic, but anyways, uh, important for farmers. Uh, what do you think will, uh, will there be a decision before the end of June about the glyphosate uh, approval to the, uh, the minister and uh, the commissioner? Thanks. Okay. Let's start the, with the there, <clears throat> there will be a decision before the end of June. What will the decision be? Well, you'll have to, you. to wait for the decision. If I had the decision now, I'd tell you. Okay. You have to patience. Anything to add to that? <clears throat> uh, was, uh, I'm here as president as a council. This is not a subject in the council, as you know. It's a uh, subject for, uh, for the SCOPAF. Uh, but to, uh, as I am informed, it's on the agenda of the next meeting again, and we'll see how it, uh, how it develops. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take some more questions on topic for this Meeting um, here in the middle, please. <clears throat> yeah, Roman Goldberg from Austria. I'm not sure if it was, I think it was topic of this meeting, uh, the milk crisis. Uh, Copa Kocheker asked or suggested uh, financial incentives to help uh, regulating the milk production in the EU. Um, is this a realistic option and is there a budget therefore? Well, as you know, we have already brought forward 23 measures since last September, including measures in last March, one of which was to double the state aids from 7,500 euro to 15,000 euro for member states to utilize on behalf of farmers if they wish to 
support and incentivize the implementation of Article 222, which of course is for the purpose of freezing or reducing production of milk. Uh, a number of member states uh, are now interested in doing so. And I would draw your attention to the announcement yesterday of Germany, where the German Minister for Agriculture at their milk summit proposed 100 million euros would be made available for the purpose of this particular scheme. Of course, we have to look at the detail of this particular proposal, but uh, in media reports, as all that I'm going on at the moment, that this is an indication that Germany, and indeed other countries, have been in contact with our services to get more information and to see how this particular scheme could be implemented. And we, at the end of June, uh, as the Minister has pointed out, we will evaluate the implementation of these particular measures to see if they're working or not. There is a great difficulty, uh, as we know, in the dairy sector in particular, uh, and we will evaluate to see what more we can do, can do uh, within the legislative arrangements that we have and the financial resources that we have at the end of June. So we are happy to continue monitoring the situation, and we do know it's very difficult. On the pig meat sector, you will notice that there is an improvement. Uh, and we've had two private storage aid schemes, and we've had a lot of extra promotion around pig meat, uh, and we've had particularly great success in opening new market opportunities in China for pig meat. So in the last two weeks, I, uh, I think it's four cents a kilo that pig meat prices have, got, have, have risen, and if that trend continues, even at a time when the product that we have in storage since February is on the marketplace at the moment, competing with this particular uh, new, new products from farmers, uh, I think it's heartening. Uh, that we may have turned the corner in relation to our crisis in the pig meat sector. I hope I'm right for the, uh, from the point of view of the farmers. Next question here in front, please. <coughs> yes, I am um, uh, Mikke Gottfredsen from uh, Landsbygdens Folk in Finland, and um, I would like to know a little bit about your discussions about the future of the CAP. Uh, I have heard that uh, one... Uh, Submit had been that the one pillar system would be enough to decrease bureaucracy. Is that correct? And uh, what are your conclusions? That's a question yeah. for the president. Of course, we never we never go in detail and uh, what who has said what uh, during the council. But I don't really recognise what you're uh, what you're mentioning. It's actually, what's uh, uh, what has been discussed is, uh, as I mentioned, the goals that are uh, present now in the two pillars is um, uh, to make sure that farmers can earn a good income uh, and that the European policy um, supports them in, uh, in achieving that. And secondly, uh, that we want to keep our rural areas vivid. Uh, and we want to support innovation because we think we need, we, uh, we need innovation for the challenges that lie ahead. And as you know, the goals uh, I mentioned are present in the two pillars that we have right now. Uh, so I think this um, uh, agreement uh, within the Council that we need to uh, confirm, reconfirm the goals that, we're, uh, that we have in the CAP right now, also in a future CAP. I think we have time for two final questions, one over here and the final one later on over there, please. Yes. All right. Um, I'll cheat a bit then because I have one question for Mr. Van Dam and one for... Also your name, please. Yes, excuse me. Uh, my name is Wim van Grijs and I write for Agrio Publishers. Um, my question for Minister Van Dam. Um, in the discussion paper, you talked about the possibility to reintroduce uh, price supports. Um, to reintroduce price support for farmers. It was 0.4, if I'm not mistaken. Um, did you get any, get any support for that uh, idea, and from which member states? Um, and for Commissioner Hogan, you spoke about strengthening the position of farmers in the food chain. Um, the current CAP uh, introduced uh, the possibility to get, uh, what is it, uh, branch organizations and uh, and producers' organizations specifically with that idea. Is, uh, don't, are the branch organizations and producer organizations not enough to, uh, to strengthen the position of farmers? Is that uh, a failed idea? Thank you very much on your uh, question. What we did in the paper was we raised the question whether the uh, current common agricultural policy 
uh, gives us the right instruments to deal with the situation that we are facing right now, in the, uh, mainly in the dairy market and the pig meat uh, market. Uh, and we said it's good to discuss uh, other instruments that, that are possible, like other financial instruments, uh, other uh, price instruments, or uh, instruments like they have in the U.S. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the conclusion is that we have to discuss uh, all the questions that are in the, uh, in the discussion paper. Um, and we have to discuss them in the upcoming, uh, upcoming future. What was the, uh, the, the, the vision of the individual member states? You have to ask them, as you know. Of price, uh, can you tell me if there was any idea for any support for the idea of uh, reintroducing price support? Well, I, th I think I mentioned in my uh, introduction that uh, today we didn't want to achieve uh, conclusions. That's not the uh, the setting of the informal council. Uh, it's uh, the start of the debate. Uh, so the conclusion is that we will continue the debate and we will discuss the issues that were mentioned in the paper and, as well as some other issues that were uh, put on the table by some other member states. Uh, we will continue to discuss them in the upcoming months and, and probably years. Uh, that's the, actually the only conclusion you could, uh, you could take from today because that was the goal of, uh, of today, was to the start of the debate and not to conclude it. Just in relation to uh, the food chain, uh, you're quite correct that the, the establishment and support for farmer organizations to come together in the form of producer groups to give them greater collective bargaining is a key particular objective of the CAP and it's working quite well. But what's not working well is the, is the type of contractual relationships that that, that producer organization ultimately is able to negotiate uh, with the other actors in the food chain. And we are evaluating uh, what is happening in France and in Spain in the UK and in Lithuania, who are four member states that have given us good examples of what national legislation that they have introduced to try and help the position of the producer as part of the food chain. Uh, and we are uh, using that information as part of the work of the Agri-Market Task Force, which, as I said, will report later this year, uh, to see what recommendations in the area of producer organizations, in contractual relationships, contractual agreements, and to identify what best practice there is in those member states to see if we need to have, if necessary, an EU framework or harmonised rules uh, for all member states to deal with the issue of uh, giving a fair price to the farmer uh, in the context of all actors in the food chain. So it's work in progress, it's, it's a new concept, but we are deepening our relationship with the member states in relation to this matter to see how we can get uh, best practice implemented right across the European Union. Okay. And finally, over here, please. <coughs> Hi, Marine Laouché from uh, Agence France Presse. I'd like to come back to the dairy crisis. Um, do you have um, an idea of uh, the calendar? Because you say you're going to discuss some ideas on, in June, but um, I know there's a problem of maybe finding some more money. There's uh, some ideas floating around. But do you think you can come up with something before the summer, or would that be for September, October? The question for are, are, are member states pushing for something to happen before the summer? Is the question for Commissioner Hogan? Uh, both of them, actually. Well, can I say that it's, there's always pressure for money. The, I've never been at a meeting yet, but people didn't want money. Uh, but we have, a, we, have a, we have a limited amount of resources, uh, and we have introduced 23 measures. Some of them are starting to work, but obviously, from the point of view of a dairy farmer, they're not working fast enough. Uh, and we have substantial increases in our exports, so our promotion uh, budget is working very effectively. We have 111 million euro in our promotion budget this year, of which 30 million is ring fenced specifically for dairy and pig meat promotion. And third country markets are actually beginning to now to purchase pig meat and dairy products, particularly in China, in a substantial way again. So we will, as, the, as, as uh, President Van Dam has said, we will look at the situation at the end of June to see if the measures are working. And if they are not, let's evaluate them and see what we can do to improve them. Uh, that not, you don't always need money in order to improve the situation. Uh, and therefore, uh, we, will, uh, we will have to, of course, very hard for me to be looking for money when eight member states have not spent the money I gave them last, in part of the targeted aid package last September. Uh, but uh, I think we'll be in a better position at the end of June to see where we are. President Van Damme. Um. I recognize what the Commission is saying, that there's always a request for more money, of course. 
uh, from the member states. But the real question now is, uh, I think we concluded earlier in the Council that um, the, uh, the situation on the dairy market is a situation of overproduction. There's too much production and that has caused the price to, uh, to lower. Uh, and that brings a lot of dairy farmers in a very difficult situation. Um, in last March, we took extra measures uh, on top of the package of last autumn, and one of the most important there was that we gave dairy farmers the opportunity to make, uh, uh, to make agreements uh, together uh, within their cooperations, but also between their cooperations about uh, production levels. And that's a, a very important step, uh, because normally it's not allowed to make uh, uh, pr production agreements. Uh, now it is allowed. Uh, what we're going to evaluate in, uh, in the next Council in June is what has been the effect of these measures. We see that it's, um, um, it isn't used uh, yet, uh, or it is or, or, well, not on a large, large scale uh, for certain. So we're going to evaluate why that is and, and if uh, agreements are still underway or um, uh, whether or not the package that we have on the table is, uh, is working. And uh, with that, we have a debate on whether uh, the measures that are on the table are, um, uh, are good enough or that we need uh, something extra. But I think that's the, uh, the process that, we're, that we will go through. Okay, that concludes today's press conference. Thank you all for visiting, and we hope to see you all in June with the next formal council in four weeks' time. Thank you very much. <clears throat>